Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us for um, our TPD webinar today. Um, we have two very exciting talks, um, and we're going to kick it off here with Benham Nabat. Uh, Benham is an assistant professor in the Human Biology Division at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center. Um, he received his PhD in cancer biology at, at Northwestern and then uh, did his postdoctoral studies here at Dana-Farber in the laboratories of uh, Nathaniel Gray and James Bradner. Um, uh, Benham's lab is focused on developing strategies to target oncogenic signaling by controlling protein homeostasis, and he's pioneered the development of a versatile technology um, that many of us will be familiar with, um, known as the DTAG system, which can rapidly degrade any, targeted pro uh, any target protein. Um, so today, Venom is going to be talking about um, some of his work in his independent lab at Fred Hutchinson uh, involving targeting kinases for destruction in cancer. Um, and with that, I will hand it over to you. Great. Well, uh, thanks so much, um, Brianna, for the, the kind um, introduction and uh, for the invitation to, to come back again um, and join you all virtually. Um, it's a real uh, privilege and, and honor. Um, it's actually my my second time um, uh, speaking in this amazing series, so I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to uh, come back. And so I'm really delighted and excited to share uh, my lab's um, ongoing interests and in, in work in the field of targeted protein degradation. And the focus of my talk will really be focused um, around some of the inroads we've been trying to make in applying our strategies for um, difficult to treat cancers. And so um, in the context of this talk, these are my competing interests. Um, so as Brianna mentioned, um, my lab is really focused on one of the hallmarks of, of cancer, which is deregulation of signal transduction pathways. And so um, we are particularly focused and dedicated to trying to understand and target these oncogenic signaling networks and key drivers um, of various different cancers uh, through altering and uh, controlling their protein stability, activity, and levels. And so my group has um, three major themes. Uh, the first is really around a drug target discovery and validation with a focus on trying to understand and to develop approaches to um, target um, understudied factors, especially kinases, um, as well as um, uh, thinking about how we can and target um, oncogenic transcriptional signaling. In addition, um, we're particularly focused on trying to um, advance and develop um, and push forward the potential of small molecule degraders um, in applications specifically around re refractory cancers. And that's what I'll share um, some data on today. And then the final theme is really focused around technology development. Um, as Brianna mentioned, we uh, developed the DTAG system um, and we're particularly focused on trying to established and, and advanced this technology platform um, into, into new modalities and, and areas. And so what I wanted to frame my, my talk in is really around um, a, a cancer that we've been invested in for quite some time now, um, which is pancreatic cancer. And this was really born out of my involvement um, as a postdoc at, at Dana-Farber in the Hale Center for Pancreatic Cancer Research, which really inspired me to, to continue to focus um, and try to make an impact in this particular cancer. And in part, um, one of the, there, there are several major challenges in this particular cancer. And um, what has been quite um, uh, uh, striking to me is that um, uh, pancreatic cancer is projected to be um, one of the, the leading causes of cancer deaths, the second leading cause, in fact, um, over the next several years, and has really poor survival, survival rates. And fundamentally, genetically, what has been of great interest to us is that um, the most commonly mutated um, oncogene in this particular cancer is KRAS, which is mutated in over 90% of cases. Um, and so there's a, a key deregulation of signal transduction pathways that are, are critical in this particular um, cancer. And so we've been focused um, to try to see if we can um, push forward a potential um, um, strategies for this particular um, cancer. And of course, um, uh, one of our focuses has been around targeted protein degradation. And as has been illustrated many times over in this um, series, um, uh, these types of approaches I think are amazingly powerful because we can have immediate and reversible protein control. Um, as I'll show and has been illustrated, um, one can achieve really remarkable selectivity and activity in targeting different factors for degradation. And fundamentally by abolishing protein um, 
all protein function and activity, one can really achieve potentially really remarkable um, uh, effects um, when going after particular targets. And so we and others have been focused on trying to develop and deploy these strategies to overcome mechanisms of clinical resistance and also as an opportunity to, to go after um, um, more challenging drug targets. And in the context of, of what I'll be sharing today in my time, um, we'll be focusing on the bifunctional degraders or, or protex, um, <clears throat> which um, has been uh, talked about previously, of course, um, by Craig Cruz and, and many others. And so um, just as a reminder for, for, for protex, these are bifunctional molecules that bind the target protein of interest on one end and then bind an E3 ligase uh, E3 ubiquitin ligase on the other. As a consequence, um, this leads to the formation of a ternary complex, which then as a consequence of this proximity induced interaction leads to ubiquitination and then degradation of that target protein of interest. And so for my talk today, what I wanted to share very briefly is how we've been leveraging our technologies, um, including the DTAC system to try to identify and then um, target um, pancreatic cancer vulnerabilities and then some of our ongoing and recent um, interest in trying to um, degrade particular kinases that we think are quite critical in, in pancreatic cancer. And so uh, just as a quick reminder, um, the DTAG system or our degradation tag system is a, is a platform that allows um, a researcher to be able to degrade conceivably any target protein of interest for biologic investigation, drug target discovery and drug target validation. And so with our approach, one genetically fuses a target of interest to a tag, which is this mutant FKBP12. And then we developed bifunctional DTAG molecules, which can bind this tag and then recruit an E3 ubiquitin ligase, leading to the ubiquitination of the fusion chimera and subsequent proteasome mediated degradation. And so early on in our in investigations, a, a key central focus of, of mine was really around trying to apply the DTAG system to KRAS itself and particularly mutant versions of KRAS that are currently undrugged, which we could then investigate the consequences of um, small molecule mediated degradation and understand both the benefits and, and liabilities and potential resistance mechanisms that might emerge as a consequence of degrading KRAS itself. And so here's an example of one of the cell lines that we engineered, which is a pancreatic cancer cell line, where we could then um, trigger the degradation of mutant KRAS quite rapidly within one to four hours. And then um, as a consequence, be able to map the, the downstream signaling changes that are occurring. And so KRAS is, is well known to, to perturb and control uh, map kinase signaling. So here we're monitoring, for example, phosphorylation of ERK, where within one hour, we can completely collapse this downstream um, network as a consequence of triggering KRAS degradation. And this is maintained over time. These particular um, pancreatic cancer cells are highly dependent on KRAS genetically, um, and so uh, this is then borne out in um, uh, viability studies in 2D or in 3D where we can nicely trigger degradation and see this loss of viability. And a lax Z cell line is shown here as a control. In parallel, we also engineered cell lines that were more resistant or less sensitive to KRS loss. And so some of this is, is in these publications that are noted um, on, the, on this slide. And so what we've been doing is comparing isogenic systems where we have um, highly dependent um, uh, signaling on KRAS itself and then less dependent, less dependency. And we've turned to various different profiling studies, including phosphoproteomics or transcriptional profiling um, efforts. And one example is shown here, where we can then rapidly degrade KRAS, compare it to small molecule inhibitor, inhibitors such as trametinib, which, which is an inhibitor um, that's used in the clinic um, uh, targeting MEK. Um, to perturb MAP kinase signaling and look at the consequences of downstream uh, signaling changes. And this has been quite informative um, for us as it led us initially to an understudied kinase known as DCLK1, which caught our attention, which we identified to actually operate downstream of mutant KRS in the context of pancreatic cancer. And so then um, teaming up with Fleur Ferguson, um, who was also a postdoc in Nathaniel's lab at the time, um, together, we endeavored on trying to tackle this particular kinase and start to understand its function and roles in pancreatic cancer. And Fleur was able to develop this really um, incredible small molecule inhibitor, DCLKIN1, which is highly selective for, for DCLK1. And we began um, and, and um, were able to, to understand its, its functions and roles in pancreatic cancer, um, and also observed that we could achieve really nice effects on viability in patient-derived pancreatic systems. And so we were, were particularly excited about pushing forward and, and continuing to understand this particular target. 
At the same time, these profiling studies also then led us to a pro isomerase PIN1. And so PIN1, um, we found to actually collaborate with mutant KRAS. And so in this case, in the context of pancreatic cancer, um, we developed genetic and DTAG strategies to degrade PIN1 itself. And then in collaboration with Benica Pinch in Nathaniel's lab and near London at the Weizmann Institute, we had two iterative medicinal chemistry campaigns to go after PIN1. And so um, this led to the development of a molecule sulfapin, which has really amazing activity, um, both in cells, but also critically in, in vivo and pancreatic um, uh, in models of, of pancreatic cancer. And so we're particularly excited um, about this target as well as one that we're continuing to understand and pursue in the context of pancreatic cancer. And so um, in that first uh, mini section, I, I really wanted to highlight how we've been leveraging and thinking about um, using our degradation-based approaches to really perturb and understand um, key regulators and, and factors in pancreatic cancer and how this is leading us to other targets that we're seeking to validate and then develop approaches to, um, in those cases, in, inhibit, but also um, strategies where it's warranted to, to degrade those factors. And so in the next part, I wanted to, to switch our uh, focus a little bit specifically around um, kinases that we've been interested in the context of pancreatic cancer. And uh, this effort um, uh, has been led by Erico and, and Kayla, which um, uh, were both um, former technicians in my team and have since moved on to, to graduate school. And um, uh, Baishan, um, who was also a postdoc um, with me in Nathaniel's lab um, while at Dana-Farber, and is now a professor at Wuhan University. And so we're continuing to work together um, on uh, the project that I'll share, but also um, other investigations as well. And so um, this effort was really born out of early studies um, from Nathaniel's lab and, and with, with Eric Fisher's lab, um, where Catherine Donovan, Fleur, and, and, and many others were focused on trying to map and understand um, what kinases were readily amenable to targeted protein degradation strategies. And, and this work has been shared um, in this series by Nathaniel and, and Catherine in the past. And so the early um, experiments from, from Hubert and, and Tan Lee um, were ones where they took this multi-targeted um, inhibitor um, that, that Tan Lee had, had developed, converted into a bifunctional protac, and then evaluated what kinases were inhibited in this kinome scan assay, which is illustrated here, um, versus kinases that were actually degraded in cells. And so amongst the factors that routinely started to show up as hits that, that we've continued to focus on that caught my attention early on um, were PTK2 and PTK2B. And so PTK2 um, is, is a kinase um, also known as FAC, which is focal adhesion kinase. And this particular factor caught our attention in part because um, not only was it highly degradable, um, and it's well known to control downstream signaling cascades, has um, a kinase domain, of course, um, operates and controls pathways such as phosphorylation of, of AKT, but also has a focal adhesion targeting domain, a firm domain, has nuclear roles and scaffolding roles. Um, in addition, um, PTK2 is commonly amplified um, in, in many different cancers, including pancreatic cancer. Um, in pancreatic cancer, it's also commonly overexpressed in, in when one um, examines um, patient specimens, um, but also there's an increase in expression over, over the course of pancreatic um, cancer progression in, in genetically engineered mouse models of pancreatic cancer. And so the particular study that also early on caught our attention was one from David DiNardo's lab at, at WashU, where they identified using um, a, a FAC inhibitor that um, combinations of FAC inhibitor with standard of care, um, such as gemcitamine or chemotherapy in, in pancreatic cancer models, or in this case that I'm showing here in the, in the context of immunotherapy, really led to a remarkable survival benefit in genetically engineered mouse models of pancreatic cancer. And they started to understand and evaluate the roles, the, both the tumor intrinsic and tumor extrinsic roles of FAC in this particular cancer. And what's been interesting to us as we've been monitoring the field is that there's a, a number of clinical candidates that are being tested in a variety of cancers. Um, they've largely all failed as single agents. All the approaches now are in combination strategies, such as the one that I'm showing here. And so we began to think, well, perhaps um, also, uh, uh, an inhibitory strategy was insufficient, really, for, for trying to tackle this particular kinase. And so what we um, set out to do was to develop highly selective tools and probes 
um, where we could examine the consequences of fact degradation versus inhibition in the context of pancreatic cancer, with the ultimate goal of also developing strategies um, um, whereby we could do these assessments then in vivo to develop small molecules that had um, applications in mouse models. And so early on, um, we've actually for some time been focused on fact it itself. And um, with Brian Groendijk, um, um, while we were again postdocs together at, at Dana Farber, we had teamed up where um, we, we were involved in a project where some of the compounds that Brian had been synthesizing for a particular kinase actually did not hit that kinase of interest, but we found to actually be hitting um, uh, FAC itself, really in a highly, a remarkably highly selective uh, manner. And so we decided to dig into this a little bit further. I won't go into the SAR here, but landing on BJG03025 um, as our lead compound with this really high selectivity um, biochemically towards um, targeting FAC. And so this gave us an opportunity to start to work with and develop some systems around understanding FAC biology. Um, here's one example where culturing um, uh, um, these cancer cells uh, from a triple negative breast cancer cell line um, in a 3D culture system. Um, we had uh, decent effects on the viability of the cells the, as a consequence of inhibiting FAC, um, but we were never able to really achieve the, the impact of um, candidates that were being evaluated in, in, in the clinic. And so we decided to, to publish um, the story and, and move on and start to set our sights on um, really getting at that question of whether or not there was a difference between degradation and inhibition of FAC um, in the context of pancreatic cancer. And so um, what I'll share with you um, in the next several slides is our, our ongoing effort to, to try to um, achieve this goal. And so what we decided to do based on that early or study um, in the last slide with Brian, um, where we were starting to evaluate um, BS4718, which was also the compound that was used by David DiNardo's lab in the study that I mentioned in the context of pancreatic cancer, we decided to, to think about and see if we could deploy that for converting it into a protec. And so using um, docking modeling, um, Baishan was able to predict and uh, identify a potential um, exit vector for creating the, the protec. And um, what we decided to do was um, uh, develop several molecules recruiting um, different E3 ligases, initially with a focus around thalidomide to recruit cerebellin as the E3 ubiquitin ligase with varying attachment points and, and linkers. And so our workflow has been, um, as I'll be sharing, um, these biochemical kind of scan assays, in cell target engagement experiments, including nanobread, uh, degradation assays, then moving on when we have had our leads to developing bifunctional controls on mechanism assays and really layering this with quantitative proteomics to evaluate selectivity. And then moving finally to starting to address the question that we've been after in terms of deg degrading versus inhibiting back in pancreatic cancer and moving towards in vivo evaluations. And so starting with VS4718, we were actually surprised when we initially performed kinome scan assays that in fact, of course we were um, engaging fact, but we saw that um, perhaps um, this molecule was actually hitting several other different quite important kinases, um, such as uh, MET, ULK1, and PLK1. Um, uh, at this point, we decided to move forward, create a small library of these protacs, and start to evaluate whether or not we could achieve fact degradation. And in fact, in these pancreatic cancer cells, we were able to achieve really nice degradation. So initially, we identified BSJ03136, um, which really had um, remarkable, remarkably potent um, degradation effect at a one to 10 nanomolar range um, in a four hour treatment context. However, this initial kinome scan um, assay gave us a little bit of pause. So we profiled this particular compound and largely um, in, in the kinome scan assay, we were seeing that we were um, engaging uh, FAC, but also many of these other um, targets as well. And so we teamed up with Catherine and, and Eric Fisher um, uh, to perform a proteomic assessment to try to evaluate what targets we were actually degrading. We confirmed that we were hitting FAC, but also we were degrading several of these kinases. So Aurora kinase A, we won ULK1. Every compound that we had made based on this VS4718 hit many of these targets. And so we thought for us, this was insufficient to classify this as a FAC, um, a selective FAC protac. So we decided to take a step back and see if we could then actually um, improve the selectivity of the parent inhibitor, BS4718 itself. And so again, turning back to docking modeling, and now with an idea of what targets we were hitting and engaging, um, looking at the structures, 
um, we thought that there was a particular opportunity to, to make some particular uh, modifications. And in the interest of time, I don't have enough, um, I, I, I am not able to really go into the details. Hopefully we'll have this story out soon with um, a, a lot of the SAR around this. And so what we initially um, focused on was developing um, new inhibitors and then using a FAC nanobret assay um, developed by Promega and colleagues at Promega as our target engagement assay in cells. And this led us to BSJ04175 um, as an inhibitor that was hitting and engaging FAC in cells so we could maintain similar potency as VS4718. And what was exciting to us is then when we went back to the selectivity profiling experiments, we had to really uh, improve the selectivity. So engaging FAC and largely um, improving on the off-target um, activity that we were seeing with the original um, parent inhibitor. From there, based on all our learnings with our initial PROTAC series, we rapidly moved to, to creating a PROTAC BSJ04146, which then had this really pronounced selectivity towards FAC. Um, this was quite exciting to us, so then we, we thought this was a great opportunity to start going through our pipeline. Um, here now I'm showing investigations in a pancreatic cancer cell line where we can nicely degrade FAC at a 10 nanomolar dose. This is just a four hour treatment um, comparing to the inhibitor here on the left. And then we made a bifunctional control compound that can inhibit but not degrade FAC shown here, this 05002. And what was exciting to us early on was that we could see a nice impact on phosphorylation of AKT signaling downstream at these early time points. And there was a tenfold shift in, in, in that potency compared to BSJ04175, the inhibitor. And so we thought perhaps these were early signs that we might be able to get illicit differential effects um, comparing degradation and inhibition. Um, the PROTAC works quite quickly as expected. Within one hour, we can trigger degradation, monitor that over time. At these early time points, we do see an impact on the downstream signaling, um, which is um, largely not present head to head in the inhibitor or the control um, at these particular doses. Um, we've done several different characterization assays, just highlighting one here, a chemical rescue experiment where we block the proteasome with pro uh, carfilzomib, inhibit um, activated E3 ligases with nettylation inhibitor MLN 4924, or compete with lenalidomide, um, or compete with the inhibitor or negative control. And in all cases, we can rescue the degradation that we achieve um, with BSJ04146. We then turn back to Catherine, um, excited about the data that we had in hand and performed um, another quantitative proteomics experiment. And here we were delighted to see the really remarkably improved selectivity towards degrading FAC um, in our pancreatic cancer context as shown here, where really the only significantly depleted protein was focal adhesion kinase. We then decided based on the impact that we were seeing on phosphorylation of AKT signaling that this was an opportunity to start to evaluate potentially the differences in um, impacting the phosphoproteome comparing our inhibitor and, and degrader. So we turned um, and teamed up with Matt Stokes at Cell Signaling Technology, um, who's developed a really um, uh, amazing uh, phosphoproteomics pipeline. Um, we prepped some samples and sent them over um, to their team uh, to evaluate um, changes in the phosphoproteome, comparing the inhibitor versus the degrader at varying different time points. And so here, just showing one example, this is the four hour time point where we see um, a, a really um, a dramatic impact on downstream signaling in the, con uh, in the context of the, the, the degrader itself um, and largely um, very limited activity um, compared to the parent in inhibitor at these head to head um, doses. And this is largely maintained over the time course of our measurements, which was between four and, and 24 hours. We've been investigating what these particular potential substrates, substrates and downstream effectors are. Many of them fall um, into pathways that are expected um, with knowledge around focal adhesion kinase, uh, receptor tyrosine kinases, rho GTPases um, involved in motility, migration, VEGF signaling. And so this has been great um, validation for us that we're, we're, we're on the right, right track based on the body of work that is around um, that exists around uh, this particularly well-studied kinase. Um, one example of a target that we've been validating and, and thinking about uh, is Paxilin, which is actually a target that binds um, and is dependent on FAC scaffolding functions and focal adhesion complexes. And here we were able to confirm that we see um, really only an impact um, on phosphorylation of Paxilin, for example, in the context of degrading FAC um, compared to inhibiting it um, with our inhibitor or bifunctional control compound. 
So this has been um, quite exciting to us. And so we moved to phenotypic biologic um, characterization in our model systems. Um, in the, as one example, in, in, in a pancreatic cancer context, um, uh, using a cell line that we culture in, in, 3D, in a 3D culture setting, we see a really um, a nice um, impact on the viability of, the, of these cells um, in the context of treating with our degrader um, with a significant shift in the IC50 compared to the inhibitor and then the bifunctional control compound. And two examples are, are shown here um, from a triple negative cell line or a pancreatic cancer cell line. We see um, this um, a nice improvement in activity um, with, a, with a selective degrader compared to the inhibitor and also compared to the clinical candidates that we were investigating early on. Um, so with this data in hand um, and our excitement about the molecule, we've been moved to additional characterization to look at activity in vivo, performing PK um, studies, and, and we were encouraged by these results, both by IV and IP administrations. And so we set out to perform MTD studies where we looked at changes in, in body weight as well as survival in healthy mice. We found that at certain regimens, um, uh, the, the, the degrader was toxic, and we were I did, able to identify a regimen um, that was every other week at 15 mg per kg or once a week at 50 mg per kg, which was not um, impacting um, healthy mice. And so with that um, information in hand, um, the last piece of data that I'll share and, and where we are currently is one where we then um, have moved towards trying to evaluate and study the consequences of fact degradation um, in vivo in the context of pancreatic cancer. So here is a xenograft mouse model where we take a pancreatic cancer cell line injected into the flanks of mice and um, performed a pharmacodynamic experiment to evaluate and compare um, one dosing regimen, which is every other day at 15 mg per kg, and uh, the second regimen, which is 50 mg per kg once a week. And so these mice received three doses and then were um, sacrificed one day or seven days after treatment. These mice were given just one administration and sacrificed 24 hours. And uh, we've, we've looked at various different tissues just for simplicity, showing the tumor itself or um, the liver. And we've just been really excited about um, the, the, the depth of degradation that we're able to achieve with both um, regimens, but in particular, the just single um, once a week administration where we then have a continued impact and diminished levels of, of focal adhesion kinase in the tumor um, just after one administration after seven days. And so we're excited about continuing to push forward and evaluate um, our, our selective tools, um, as well as in combination approaches um, in patient-derived pancreatic cancer models, um, both in, in vitro and culture settings and organoids, and then translating and moving um, into genetically engineered mouse models. Um, I didn't have time um, to share our, our other work that re recently came out in collaboration with Nathaniel and Eric Fisher's lab. Um, identifying and studying the consequences of keep one um, recruitment um, for protect strategies, where we were there able to identify um, uh, uh, kinase recruiting um, protects that could degrade uh, focal adhesion kinase, but there were some liabilities and, and intricacies there um, that were, were quite interesting. Um, so just uh, wanted to provide the reference for that as well. Um, so with that, I'll end um, and uh, just to highlight that uh, we're, we're continuing um, our efforts and excitement around the DTAC system, leveraging it to identify and study targeted, tar, uh, targetable vulnerabilities in pancreatic cancer, and our ongoing efforts to develop selective tools uh, from multi-targeted agents to be able to perturb particular factors that we think are quite critical and important in pancreatic cancer, like focal adhesion kinase, where we can really take advantage of degrading the factor versus inhibiting it. And um, of course, I need to thank um, uh, my lab um, and we're rapidly growing. And so um, we are currently hiring um, at all levels and recruiting, continuing to recruit graduate students and technicians as well, in addition to, to postdocs. So please reach out. My contact information is here. Many collaborators um, and support and um, uh, really the training from Dana-Farber has, has, has led to all this work. So it's just um, great to be back. And, um, our, I need to thank our funding sources as well. So thanks um, so much for the opportunity to return.